everyone and welcome to this different video. I thought it would be fun to record a little Q&A uh, video from the trail. As you can see, I'm staying in a hotel tonight. I'm having uh, a rest day. Today we're about two thirds into our chocolate hike. So not too, too far from the end, hopefully, fingers crossed. And I thought I would uh, answer a couple of your questions. So if you have any more questions or if there's uh, anything that comes up during this video, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best answering those questions. The first question we got is, um, where are you from and do you live in the UK? And uh, no, we're not living in the UK. We're uh, from Germany. Actually, Otto is from Croatia. He was a stray dog there and uh, lived in a shelter and we came over just to do this hike. We're not living in the UK. Then the next question is, how did we plan our hike? Um, that's an interesting uh, question because I spent quite a lot of time on planning my hike. Basically what I wanted to do because I think it's a very E or an easier option is to link different long distance trails, different footpaths, um, different yeah, hikes that already exist basically. Otherwise you just like would need to check on the map for every footpath, which obviously if you're doing a hike that's um, over 1500 miles long, that's gonna be a lot of work. And also I wanted some sort of infrastructure like on these established long distance hikes, like the West Highland Way, the Pennine Way. There are campsites, there is a hiking community, so it's easy enough to meet people. For the UK, there are different websites, but uh, one that's really um, helpful, I think, is the um, website of the Long Distance Walking Association. And basically, they list all trails that exist, not just the big national trails, but also a lot of smaller um, hikes. And you can, there's a search option thing there it's like a database of hikes that exist in the UK um, that's really helpful for smaller hikes that aren't probably very well known um, to find these on there I just started there's obviously the big national trails and I started um, like from trails I've heard of or that I knew already and just started um, piecing them together. Like for example, I knew about the West Highland Way, obviously, um, the Pennine Way, the Great Glen Way, um, the Offa's Dyke Path and the Coast Path. Um, bigger, well-established um, trails of our hike. And then I just started piecing those together. So um, for example, if I, um, I knew I would finish the West Highland Way in Milgai and then I, um, checked okay is there any way i could link like from milgai to the start of the pennine way and then i found okay there's the for example the scottish national trail i just pieced them together and for some sections there weren't like um any existing trails and in that case i just used the um, ordnance survey map they are also available as um, a desktop or a phone version and just checked if there are footpaths and how could uh, and how I could link up like different footpaths to create basically my own yeah trail from for those sections where there wasn't an established trail so that was a process then I plotted everything um, back home and then once I had that rough plan I've um, downloaded um, the offline maps for the entire hike and now what I do every night is just to check the trail like the section of trail and I'm gonna walk the next day sometimes I make modifications if I can see that it goes through a lot of fields or along a big road or something like that I just check um, what I plotted back home more in detail and I can um, modify it on my phone Maybe another thing um, about that as well. Obviously you can't plan everything like before you set off on a um, big hike like this. Um, but what I'm always trying to do is like have a bit of a rough idea about the next days. For example, I'm always planning um, about a week ahead maybe. And I just make sure that I have a rough idea about resupply points. Where could I send a... Um, resupply package where is a supermarket is there um, is it easy enough to get water there are there any campsites to get a shower to do some washing etc and more in detail 
I'm also making sure that I basically think 24 hours ahead. <laughs> that means that I um, make sure that I know how's the especially water situation in summer. Just double checking that to not get caught out on water or food. Then the next question is how are you handling the heat? I mean right now it has cooled down a little bit but it was very hot in June, uh, not going to lie. I mean it's not hot compared to other parts of Europe obviously um, but with Otto's black coat it's still if, if it's um, really sunny he's gonna get hot easily. I always make sure if I can see that the temperatures are above 20 degrees and it's um, not overcast but really sunny I always make sure to um, start hiking really early when it was really hot in June I started oftentimes I started hiking um, around five half five in the morning um, to get a big part of the hike basically done before 10 a.m. already um, and that helps a lot that's um, that that really works well for us and um, basically I'm going to hike for four hours um, to have mo in most cases I um, can get 15 to 17 kilometers done um, in the morning if it's not too hilly and then I have a, a long lunch break to just yeah wait the biggest heat of the day is basically gone and then I start hiking again um, at around 3 to 4 p.m. depending on the weather and on the heat obviously and then do another three hours two to three hours um, yeah, which really works great because we're not doing more than 25 kilometers anyway on most days. I'm also carrying like one of those cooling vests um, for Otto um, that also helps if it's really hot because he's not very uh, keen on water so he would uh, Ne he would never go into the water um, like that to uh, cool himself down which is another question um, is it warm enough for Otto to sleep I'd like to sleep in a tent with my dog but I'm afraid he gets cold how I manage this is um, first off I am carrying a bit of a, um, a piece of uh, a closed cell phone mat which um, is basically an insulation layer and also his yeah, just something a bit um, comfortable for him to um, lay down. I'm using that. So that that's one layer of insulation already to insulate him from the ground. And then what I also carry is, um, that's a synthetic um, blanket or even a quilt. I can um, basically um, with these little snaps I can close it around his body to make sure that um, if he turns at night that the blanket actually stays on a little bit like a coat I'm gonna put a picture here to see um, so that you can see how it works but I can yeah I can open it up and it's just a blanket so I can just put it over him or you see sometimes um, lies on top of it just depends but if it's really cold I can um, it has a buckle and some snaps and I just can close it around his body and that works really great um, I've also in the beginning when it was really cold um, around yeah, zero degrees minus one I've um, also had a fleece jumper for him I'm also gonna put a picture here the jumper and the um, blanket and that was perfectly fine he wasn't cold at all um, but since it's really warm now at night I have um, just kept the blanket for now and sent the fleece jumper back uh, home. The next question is uh, really interesting. Um, someone asks, do you sometimes get caught up in putting in the miles rather than enjoying the moment? That's really interesting because um, I think I would be um, a person that would be more focused on getting the miles in. Um, but with Otto it's really great because um, I cannot and I don't want to like push really big days with him so it's really easy because if I'm hiking with Otto naturally the days gone not gonna be that long so usually we're doing about 15 to 17 miles sometimes a bit more 
oftentimes a bit less. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm not tempted to do bigger miles, which naturally means that I'm, I'm, I'm taking way more breaks than I would if I would be on my own, I think, um, which makes it easier to to like appreciate the moment, appreciate the hike, because yeah, I'm just not rushed. It doesn't, it's not necessary for us to hike really fast just to be on a campsite in at 1 p.m. So yeah, we're just taking our time and I feel like it's uh, that's something that's uh, way easier um, when I'm taking Otto with me than it would be if I would be on my own. Which walks are on your top five to-do list? Ooh, that's also <laughs> a bit uh, yeah difficult because obviously you're gonna you're meeting a lot of people and everyone tells tells you about their favorite hike. Right now on my top five to-do list are the coast to coast. I'm really I I'm hearing so much about it. Basically, crossing England from west to east and uh, it crosses actually the Pennine Way uh, at some point. And it also goes uh, through, the, uh, through the Lake District and I've never been there and I'm, I've heard so many nice things around, about it. So yes, that's for sure. That's, uh, yeah, that's something that um, I'm, yeah, I'm already planning like in the back of my head, but that's something I'm definitely uh, going to do with Otto. Another hike, um, I don't know if that's possible with Otto. It, I think if I would do it with Otto, it um, would only be possible um, if, it's, if, I, if I'm sure that it's a bit more dry and that rivers, for example, are not in spade and that would be the Cape Wrath Trail. Um, uh, we didn't do it this year because um, usually in April it's really wet and boggy. So yeah, that, that would be way too hard for him and I, um, yeah. The rivers are in spade and crossing them that's obviously very dangerous if I'm also carrying Otto so that would be something if I would take Otto with me then um, yeah it would only be possible I think um, yeah if, if I know that the the box situation are is not too bad and the rivers are not in spade so it's easier to cross them but that's something that I would um, yeah, also do on, on my own but that's definitely on the list because I really love Scotland I just doing that would be really nice. Uh, then another hike that I really want to do, probably also uh, not really possible with Otto because on, in some parts um, dogs are even banned. So yeah, just um, it would, um, just depends. But is the uh, Tour du Mont Blanc, which is basically going around uh, the Mont Blanc um, mountains or mountain range? Um, yeah. That's obviously something very different um, and with a lot of elevation, but I would really um, yeah, love to do that hike. And then uh, for a last thing that I would really want to do is actually something um, in Germany, but in a part where I've never been to. Um, it's called the Harzer Hexenstieg, which is basically translate to the Witch's Trail or Witch Trail. Um, in, it's more in the uh, um, northern part of Germany and you can also do this as a winter hike if it's really snowy and I would love to do something like that um, camping wild camping when it's really when it's a bit snowy um, it's not really high up so it's not um, it's not the Alps or anything it's um, just like a, a lower mountain range but I think it's very beautiful because there are a lot of woodland there and it's really popular in Germany and I would love to do a winter hike but it's not too technical so it wouldn't be that hard and yeah but that's something I would definitely love to do. Mm. Then how do you handle those moments of loneliness um, or missing people? For me it, um, it wasn't too hard because WhatsApp and voice messages it's really easy to stay in contact with friends and family so um, what I'm usually doing is uh, record uh, voice messages when I'm walking during the day because I have a lot of time during the day and you can only listen to so many podcasts or music or audiobooks. So I'm recording uh, voice messages and listening to voice messages. Uh, you don't have to type everything. You can just uh, talk a little bit more and let people know how you're feeling. And yeah, that helps a lot. Another question, why Britain? Why do we hike? Uh, in the UK. 
And the answer for me personally is uh, pretty simple because uh, one, the UK is very dog friendly and it's really easy to hike with a dog. I've never had any problems. Um, people here are so open if you're hiking with a dog. It's so easy to bring your dog almost anywhere. And yeah, that's something I really love about that. Um, he always gets treats. It's, it's just so easy and comfortable to, to be with a dog in the UK. So I really like that. And the second part is that it's not, I mean, there are obviously there are exceptions and June has been very hot, but not as hot as uh, it would be in the southern part of Germany where I'm living. If I would go like even more um, south, it's yeah just too hot and if I want to go out like in summer I feel like the UK is a really it's really good because it's um, yeah temperatures are a bit more like moderate another thing that I really like about uh, the UK is the hiking culture there are a lot or it feels like that at least uh, to me there are a lot of uh, younger people hiking and being passionate about the outdoors and there's a real sense of community that I, that that also exists in Germany, but I didn't feel it that much. People my age are not as passionate about hiking, wild camping. In Germany, it feels like uh, that to me at least. I think like people in the UK are more open-minded when it comes to wild camping. So that's also a plus. I have never had any problems wild camping. Uh, I've uh, experience differently in uh, Germany for example and I really like the that there's a lot of um, national trails that are really um, well marked and there's a lot of infrastructure there and there are actually people hiking hiking them so there's a bit of a trail community and yeah just that's what makes it so interesting I think and also when it comes to the landscape it's more moderate like there's it's not as hard like or for most parts it's not as hard as for example hiking in the alps especially with auto um, but it's not completely flat either um, so i feel like it's just a good mix it's not too easy and there's a lot of lot to see a lot of different landscapes um, but it's not like incredibly hard and challenging or technical either mm, have you had to increase or change dog food how's your pup's paws doing i didn't uh, change the food that um, Otto's used to because I don't want to change his diet too much. Um, he's a little food sensitive, so I'm trying to stick with the food he knows. Um, but I had to um, increase um, the amount of dog food that he's having. He's eating about one third more um, than he usually would when we're at home. And he also gets a lot more treats. So whenever I find something, I obviously he gets a lot um, on the side. His paws are holding up great. I've never had, honestly, he's never had any issues with um, his paws. They're really like, obviously we hike a lot. His paws are really like toughened up. So I, he didn't have any problems. I carry uh, boots for him for emergencies or if he would cut his paw or anything. But so far I didn't have to use um, anything and I didn't have to use cream either so yeah he's been totally fine I always make sure to check his paws um, every night before we go to bed but he didn't have any issues a question about uh, if I have a stretching routine um, <laughs> I didn't have one which is crazy and not the was not the best idea but since I got my plantar fasciitis I'm always stretching. I carry this uh, little golf ball that I use to roll basically the um, bottom of my foot to uh, loosen up the uh, tissues that uh, are located like on the bottom of the foot. I'm doing that every night and I'm also carrying this cork ball that I use to uh, loosen my uh, calf muscles which was I think also one of the reasons why I got my plantar fasciitis because I have really like tight calf muscles so I'm, I'm doing that that's my routine since I yeah healed my plantar fasciitis because I don't want it to uh, come back um, did you ever get a fine for camping illegally on your trip um, no, I did not and I think it. I don't know if I'm correct here, but I think um, it's not very likely to get fined 
um, for wild camping because I think it's only a civil offense and not a criminal offense. Um, so I think the most likely thing to happen is that someone, um, the landowner mostly I think, would ask you to move on, like to pack up the tent and hike on. And I think only if you refuse to do that, that would be a criminal offense and you could get fined, I think. You can probably get fined just for wild camping too, but I'm I'm, sh I'm not sure. I think if you just move on, it's very unlikely, I think. Um, but I've never been asked to move on, not on this trip and not on my la trip last year on the coast path either. So yeah, all good. I've never had any problems. A question about Otto. <laughs> Uh, what kind of rescue dog uh, is he? We don't know exactly. We adopted him, as I said, he uh, used to be a stray dog in Croatia and he uh, lived in a shelter. What's in him? I don't know. I've been told on this trip a couple of times that he looks like a Petterdale and I kind of see it. I always thought like, or our uh, vet thought he would um, most likely be a cross between a um, Dachshund and a Jack Russell Terrier like with his ears and also his character. Something like that and probably a lot more uh, dogs in him. And then a good question for the last one. I'm planning my first through hike for next year. Any advice for a first timer? Obviously I could do a whole video uh, on that. What I feel like um, would be a good advice go as lightweight as possible. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, spending a lot of money because obviously the uh, ultra light gears can be and most and is oftentimes uh, not cheap but very expensive. But even you don't have to buy a lot of like professional if it's just your first through hike and you don't have maybe a lot of lightweight stuff, you don't have to buy a lot of um, expensive things but just try and um, go as lightweight as possible that means um, try to not pack your fears um, which is yeah like a standard thing in the hiking community because oftentimes we tend to think like okay what if it gets really cold what it's like what if all my six pairs of socks are wet I need a seventh pair obviously uh, not uh, so just try to go as lightweight as possible and cut out everything that you don't need. For example, uh, don't take a lot of spare clothing. I only have one outfit for hiking and one for sleeping. Um, and if you do that and just try and, and really think about what you need and not what you might need in a very unlikely scenario. I think that's a good way to start, like really question everything. It also helps to weigh your stuff just to see because you probably are going to be surprised how heavy some stuff is or how it adds up. Try to only take the, the bare minimum because everything that you're not carrying you will be happy if your pack is really light because it will be way easier and um, more enjoyable in the hike in the end. Don't like put too much pressure on yourself especially if it's your first through hike, maybe your first longer backpacking trip. Um, don't think about that you need to do a certain amount of miles each day. Just, yeah, just see what feels right. Just start slow, build, build up the miles. I think that's a good way and don't have like, don't over plan or overthink. Um, just go with it and just, you can always do more if you feel comfortable, but and maybe just start a little bit slower to get used to the routine and everything. Yeah, I think this was everything. It was a bit longer than I thought it would be. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm trying my best to answer these. If you like the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. It's free and it would really mean a lot and help a lot. I will see you on our next chocolate episode in a few days. See you. Bye.